Right. We can uh, start it. Uh, you know, Timo is a Plone core developer and founder of Kit Concept from Germany. Can I get the picture there? I need to get the, the, the screen on there. <laughs> Thanks. The upcoming Plone 6 stack already powers hundreds of high-profile websites uh, all around the globe. Today I will present a case study how one of the largest research institutions in Europe alone runs hundreds of websites on the, on the Plone 6 Volto stack. In between 2009 and 2010, I lived in Barcelona for two years. Um, I worked as a freelancer back then. I did a Google Summer of Code project where I work on uh, Plone Up discussion. Um, and at some point, I got bored by working remotely, um, so I started to work for the local university, the uh, Polytechnical University Barcelona, UPC. And I met people there who over the years become dear friends, colleagues. Uh, I met Victor there, who is my colleague today. I met Ramon, who is a dear friend. Uh, I met Albert, who did the uh, Plone 5 and Plone 6 uh, user interface, uh, and Irene, who worked for us as a UX designer for a few years. Uh, Jeanette is also, also here today, uh, who was our, uh, our manager back then. Um, yeah, so we had a great team back then. Uh, and the UPC, as I said, I was only there for two, two, uh, two years, so, so uh, all, the, all the fame goes to them. Um, they did some amazing stuff, actually. Um, they, I think they still run the largest clone cluster in Europe, maybe even in the world, not in the world most likely, but in Europe. They have like 500 to 600 clone sites running or had them running. I, I haven't checked up uh, lately, to be honest. Um, they built their own like social media platform. They had a video platform back then. Um, and they had something that they called uh, GenWeb, uh, a generator uh, for university websites. Uh, like long time ago, uh, where you could, by just filling out a form, get your own website up and running, your own clone website up and running in a matter of, of minutes, uh, which back then I found um, pretty amazing. Uh, and over the years, uh, we saw lots of similarities and recurring requirements when working with uh, universities, with research institutions or research bodies. Uh, and every, every time I discuss requirements with the client and then I usually go to Victor at first and, and ask him and, and he always has this like this face then and he says of course they want that and it's like he sometimes he, <laughs> he seems even a bit bored by the requirements but but it's like it's 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 hard to find that that we find like complete new requirements on that because yeah we kind of thought about those problems earlier it's maybe at a uh, at a previous uh, um, uh, time um, but the interesting part of that is that even if technology changes rapidly, and we see that uh, with Plone 6 where we rewrote half of the, of the stack of Plone 6 in a new language, right? Um, ideas and concepts stick. GenWeb was built, I don't know actually if it was built for Plone 3 or Plone 4, something along those lines. <laughs> um, with Plone 4, uh, then move to Plone 5. Uh, it uses tiny MCE templates, Mosaic, um, uh, which was the latest technology back then. Um, but time moved on, right? And today we have Plone 6, we have Volto. Um, technology changed, changed uh, the way web development happens today changed. We, we all know that. Um, but the thing is, when clients approach us uh, today with those kind of requirements, uh, even though we even though when we switch the entire technical stack, we never have to start from zero, right? We always have previous concepts, previous ideas, and that's true for both us as community and us as, as, as a company or a solution provider, right? So we have to experience from the past what we did in the past, and this is something that I truly love about my job, actually, the reinvention of ideas and concepts where we gained lots of experience and we make it better every single time. I mean, maybe that was because I had like brothers and sisters and I loved playing with Lego so much and when they destroyed my Lego, I had to rebuild it every single time and every single time, even though I was furious at the beginning, like I built something that was slightly better than the version before, right? And I enjoyed that so much and it's something that I still enjoy in my, in my daily life actually to just make it a little bit better than, than last time maybe, if you have the chance to, 
to re-implement. And of course, technology changes, so it allows us to it allows us to to create things that we aimed for in the past, but we hadn't the right technology. And 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 when the right technology comes along, uh, then uh, then you can actually implement it. That's something that we'll talk about in the in the keynote on Friday, more in depth. So yeah, this continuous improvement to make things better over time. Uh, um, is something that I really enjoy. And I would like to present you a case study where we reinvented some of the ideas and concepts that we did in the past. So this success story is about the Forschungszentrum Jülich, which is one of the biggest research institutions in Europe. FZJ, uh, or Forschungszentrum Jülich, translate to uh, Jülich Research Center in English. Um, they host more than 7,000 employees and scientists, including Nobel Prize winner Peter Grunberg. Um, FZJ is located in an area of 1.7 square kilometers between Cologne and Aachen, and they have an annual revenue of more than 800 million euros. So, quite a big organization, right? In 2020, they asked us to do a relaunch of their website with Plon 5.2 and Volto. Uh, we did that. Uh, we relaunched the main intranet site uh, with 18 organizational units that are like separate, and migrated more than 100,000 content objects and. 30 gigabytes of data. If you're interested in that, um, I recommend uh, checking out my World Plone Day presentation from 2021 about this project. Um, but today I want to talk about the project that they asked us to do after we did the intranet. Um, that was the relaunch of the main portal that we started in November 2020. Um, but they, they didn't ask us to only do the main portal, but as well uh, migrate 11 institutes and more than 80 institute areas and roughly like 50 organizational units and subsites, they, their HR or career website. And back then they had roughly like more, or they had more than 100 project websites, right? So that's quite a bit of like, quite a number of websites. And we had to do that all within 18 months. Uh, and uh, it, there was a bit of time pressure, like in any project, right? Um, uh, the support contract of the old system that we were using uh, was running out. Uh, so we had to uh, to migrate to to Plone, but that was not the only thing. Uh, there was also the global pandemic that was still going on. It actually started during the FZJ intranet project, so we had some experience with that, and FZJ had some some experience with that as well. Um, but still, we had to migrate like 100 institute insti slash institute area slash business units and whatnot. We had to train the staff because every institute, institute area, business unit, whatnot. Um, had their own staff, right, and their own like editors. So we had to train all those people during a pandemic, where the editors were actually used to to in-house trainings, right, like to meet face to face, and that just wasn't possible uh, during the pandemic. Um, so for the technical stack, we chose uh, Volto and the Plone Six stack. When I say Plone Six stack, I mean Volto plus REST API plus plus uh, Plone Five Point Two, right? Uh, and Volto was one of the key uh, aspects uh, for the success of the project, amongst others. Uh, and I would like to show you what we did and how Volto helped with that. So Plone 6 and Volto is all about blocks, right? I said that many times. I hope I don't bore you um, after like saying this over and over again. But Plone 6 is all about blocks, blocks, blocks. Uh, Plone 6 has this one column layout for responsive design. And it, has, it comes with, with grid blocks that allow you to have those multi-column sophisticated layouts. Uh, and it, all's, it is all prepared for responsive and mobile, mobile web, right? Volto comes with, or Plone 6 comes with a, with a set of predefined uh, core blocks that, of course, we used uh, at FZJ. But we also built 29 custom built blocks for them. I will present uh, an excerpt of that because I can't present every, every single block that would take too long. Um, so I will just go through a few. So the first block I would like to present is actually on their on their on their front page. That's actually from like yesterday, I think, uh, or the day before yesterday. Um, so this is a slider block. Um, you can teaser an arbitrary amount of elements. Uh, I think you all know how sliders work. You can you can yeah move right, move left. Um, so this is the outside view. Uh, nothing too uh, too uncommon. And this is now the edit view. Um, if you're in the edit view, you have on the right side the, the, uh, the, the, the sidebar and you can add um, an arbitrary amount of new elements um, that you want to tease. Uh, and when you choose an element, you see on the right side that it, that it takes the title, the description and also the image. 
and you're now free to overwrite that because sometimes you want to have a different like wording uh, and you're also you can also add a head title for instance right so the the system will try to make it as easy as possible for editors so we take over this information that's on the content object but it doesn't mean that you have to take over that 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 information because when you want to teaser content in a different context you might want uh, a different different title or a different description right so you're you can overwrite that and you can also like drag and drop um, the elements and it will like it will show you right away in on the left side um, how it, how it will look like because Plone 6 truly has this in place editing feature where you see exactly what you see when you're when you're not locked in right um, another block that we used on the top is the uh, so-called highlight block. It works like roughly the same like, a, like the slider block that you saw. You choose an existing element that you want to tease. It takes over the title, the description, and the image that you have, and it shows the, the button that you can also override if you want. Um, and uh, the third block that I would like to present is the, is the parallax block. This is a screenshot actually of the, of the current uh, front page, so if you scroll down uh, a little bit, you see this like standard parallax block, right? It goes into uh, two speeds, so you have uh, basically uh, an image. You put text over it, um, and the uh, yeah, the editing looks the same like in the previous one. Um, we also have a carousel block that looks that that uh, that allows you also to have an arbitrary amount of uh, of teasers. Um, you can also drag and drop them in the order. Uh, if there are more than four or three, you you can define that then. Um, then it shows shows the carousel. Editing works exactly the same like the slider block. That's the cool thing also about the about Volto blocks, right? You don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time, but you can just use the data structure that you that you that you need. And if you have like two or three variations of the main data structures that you need, then you're basically free to implement whatever you want on the on the front end, right? So it's pretty pretty trivial actually. Um, all those blocks have lots of variations. Uh, you see here four variations of the of the um, uh, carousel block for FZJ. Um, uh, and this, this, of course, the variations depend on the corporate design and specifications from your clients. So FZJ has uh, eight uh, corporate design colors, so uh, we have actually eight uh, different versions of that. Uh, of that block. You can choose, like, if you have a background color, if you want a narrowed width background or a full width background. Uh, and depending on the block, there, uh, there are lots of more options. Um, I will come to the, the, the number of options in a, in a minute. Uh, the next block, um, which is like, if I would have to name one block that, that stands out, is it's the grid block, because it's, it's super flexible, and it's a very general purpose uh, block that we also open source pretty, pretty soon, and it, this will actually become the standard grid block for Plone 6, right? Um, and um, here is uh, a page that we use internally to show all the variations that are possible, right? So when a client approaches us, there's usually an existing corporate design manual and we just like take the corporate design background colors and whatnot and integrate that into, into the blocks. And here's, uh, here's like the, the grid blocks. You have a four grid block, three grid block, two grid block, one grid block. Then you have uh, different background colors. Uh, here, blue, you can uh, have a light blue, you can make that narrowed width, like full width. Um, actually, I couldn't, like, my screenshot tool and Keynote don't allow, like, screenshots that are that long. <laughs> so, uh, like, the like Keynote has, like, 10,000 10, pixels, I think, and, and my screenshot tools, like, cut that into many. So, so this is really a small excerpt, right? But you get the idea of, like, the amount of variations that you get with just a few, like, settings, more or less, right? And this is something that you have to into account when you build your Volto site. Because when you want that to be like accessible, for instance, you have to check that, right? If that really works, if the contrast works, and, and those kind of things. Um, so always be careful, like how uh, you should always be careful, like uh, about how powerful blocks can be, right? And the, the amount of variations that you can actually create with with that. Um, I will show you a short uh, um, screencast of the editing experience. Um, of the grid block, so you so you choose the grid block. You can choose the uh, number of columns. I choose two here. You can choose from a number of sub blocks, so you can have images, teasers, listings, text. You can actually add any block that you have in there. So if you have a social media block or something, you can also add that here. Uh, here we added two two images. Um, you can you can choose from existing images or upload images, like in the normal uh, in the normal block. Um, and you can drag and drop them if, if you want to reorder them. 
Um, you can create, uh, you can add a, a third uh, element if you want. So the first uh, choice of columns is just the, the first choice, right? You can always, you can always remove, reorder, or delete uh, blocks if you want. Um, and yeah, you can create a second column uh, block with, with something else, like take, for instance, like you can add text in there. Um, the text is, of course, rich text. You can edit it. You can add an image. Um, so I guess you get, get the idea. Um, so as said, we built almost like 30 blocks, 29 to be exact, for, for FZJ. Uh, the blocks all have variations, and if you can combine those blocks arbitrary, right? I only showed you the variations of a, of a single block, and then think about if you have all the variations of all the blocks, and then you can, can combine them arbitrarily, right? This gives you quite an amount of flexibility in the, in the system, right? So you, it allows you to create very sophisticated um, page, composition, um, uh, page compositions. And it, and it has been great in the FZJ projects to, to see editors to just use that flexibility and come up with like new layouts that like we haven't even thought about, right? We initially always create default um, layouts for the client. Our designer does that, right, to make recommendations how, how a page looks like. But, but the, the system is so powerful that they can come up with, with their own if they want to, right? Okay, so that was, that was about uh, Volto and blocks. Uh, the next challenge was that, as I said, it wasn't only the portal, uh, but also lots of other sites and subsites. Um, and I will walk you through what we did there. So, SHA has those 11 institutes, which are like, yeah, institute uh, clusters, more or less. And they have more than 80 institute areas, which you can see here, right? And this is also only an excerpt, like all of the institute didn't fit into the, on the, uh, on that slide. And I think during our, during our project, like they added like five, six, seven new or so. I, I don't know, but lots, lots of them. Um, and all institutes and institute, institute areas needed their own website, right? Because I mean, they're 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 separate uh, um, from the main uh, from 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 the main Forschung Center Mulich, right? Um, so they needed their own header, which you can see here. Um, they have their own like uh, yeah, they, they their name uh, on top of that. Uh, they have their own footer, uh, they have their own search, and they have their own permissions that are granted to the staff. I will come to that later, how we, how we actually implement that. And I will show you now how to create a new institute website in two minutes. So you go to the add menu, you choose institute, like you choose a page. Um, let's create like a clone institute. Uh, institute websites in FZJ uh, are supposed to have a, to start with a text block that introduces uh, the, the, the institute. Um, it uses a text block with a background color, with full background color, and the next thing that should be there is an institute slider. Actually, I started from scratch now. In, in reality, we have a template that's created for institutes that are like pre-filled with lots of things to make it easier, but, but now for the sake of like showing you, um, I, I created that from, from scratch, right? Um, so you saw the slider already. That's a different slider that's supposed to be only used by the institutes, right? It's, but it's internally it works exactly the same like the, like the, uh, like the main slider. Uh, and you see here in the header, the name of the institute is there because that's part of their corporate design, so we don't need the title uh, of the Volto page, so you can remove the title for landing pages if you want to. Um, and now we have the, 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 the institute site, but of course we need to fill them with subsites, right? Because they have their own navigation, so we need to add a few, uh, a few sub pages here. So we add them, and you can see the, the navigation um, is, is, is filled, right? And there you see like how, the, how the, the final result will look like. You have the header, you have the institute name, um, you have the main navigation, you have the, the own breadcrumb, you have your own footer. You briefly saw the, the footer below with the, with the information. That's something that you can fill in in the metadata. Uh, and here you have your entire uh, Plown Institute, right, in like a few minutes. Um, we also have those institutes area, uh, institute areas that belong to one institute. You can see that only the header um, is different here. Um, so in an institute area, um, you just have the, 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 the parent institute on, on the top, right? So you can navigate. Um, this is specific to, 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 to the uh, FZJ. Um, I guess, apart from that, it works exactly like, like an institute that I showed you. Um, then on top of that, um, we also have like uh, business units uh, and other, other sub-sites. Um, this is the Equal Opportunities Bureau, uh, which is one example. You can see it, it has another header 
that is different from the main portal and different from the from the institute uh, website. Uh, you can spot on the right side that they have like this this uh, this additional menu that's uh, exclusive uh, for them. Um, and this this basically behaves like like an institute site, right? But it organ organizationally, it's 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 different. Um, but it's the same idea of having a subsite. Uh, if you have been into the Plone community, it's like basically the, the lineage use case, right? And we made it work with, with Walto. Um, uh, another example where you have a page that's not uh, a, a website on its own, but rather like a subpage, um, is the uh, the the, res is the research groups. Um, they start with with this full size uh, um, uh, image. Uh, and they're supposed to like display what a research group does within an institute or within the main portal. Um, yeah, you can see here this, this is the head, it's supposed to be the head of the, the institute and you have member profiles here. You have news that are related to that so you can uh, projects uh, and whatnot. Um, so you can, we have an elaborate system to, to mark content with like institute, institute areas uh, and, and, and uh, topics and then you can of course filter those news um, according to, uh, to, uh, to this. Uh, another example is uh, project websites um, uh, or yeah, a website about single projects. Um, where a project is, is teasered with the stakeholders and this information, so this is basically the same. And now we come to the to the big gun, right? So the gen web idea that you create a website within three minutes and it's a complete like separate uh, website, um, uh, your your own clone instance basically, right? So I'll show you briefly how, how this works. Um, so here you have a default, what we also call project websites, don't mix that up with the other project website, but this is basically an, uh, a separate, uh, a separate um, uh, site, right? So think about like a joint venture from different universities or different uh, institutes, right? And, and they want to, uh, or, or, or there's uh, an event or something, and they want to create that. And it should be roughly in the corporate design of the, of the main portal, but, but not exactly because they have their own, uh, their own image and it should be slightly separatable like from a visual design from the, from the main portal. And this is how that thing looks. So it, 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 it has the highlight block, if you remember that one. Um, and uh, then, then it has the grid block and at the bottom it has like the, uh, the stakeholders and, and uh, yeah, a footer. Um, and you can go to the site settings um, and change things here, right? So you can change, for instance, the, the logo. Um, so let's create a PlonCom site, right? So we click change the logo. You can change the fonts that's predefined. Um, we changed the, nav the main navigation color to the Plone Blue. Actually, not sure if that's really the Plone Blue. I just choose the blue. Um, then you can edit the footer, the elements that you already saw. So we want to uh, exchange the, uh, the element in the, in, the, in the footer. There we want to add the Plone Foundation because the Plone Foundation is paying for that site. Um, we can then reorder uh, the, the, the elements in the footer, right? So we move contacts to the beginning. And here this Jara um, logo, we, we, we move it to the front. We can add more logos if we want. Uh, the, the site works with like one logo or with 20, it doesn't care. And then we save and you see that we have the new, new logo, uh, we have the new navigation, uh, we have a different font, um, and uh, the Jara is in, in front and the Plum Foundation is there. Um, so you can easily edit, edit things there, right? Um, so this allows you to like also within a few minutes to create a, a, new, a new site that, that's visually distinctive uh, from the other ones. But it still, it still kind of looks a bit like the FSJ sites, right? This is, this is what, what we want because they are close. But sometimes you have projects um, that, that should be really visually distinctive, right? They want to be distinctive from the, from the main portal. Um, and this is, this is just an example of how, how things could look like and, and a possible cri uh, uh, client requirement, right? So they want really a different look and feel. So this is grid blocks. They want to show that in a complete different way, right? They want to have more colors in there. They want to have a complete different footer. Um, so this is, this is also a normal requirement, right? And what do you do then? You can either like create an Uber, like Uber control panel, um, uh, but you could also just say, okay, we accept the fact that sometimes like uh, they want something completely different and then we just give them something different, right? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, 
And the cool thing about Volto and, and Plone and separating the front end from the back end is that you can keep your back end and everything that you built with that, like the control panel and, this, the, and the infrastructure, and you can just build another front end. And then you're free to do whatever you want, right? No, no matter what, what the client wants, um, as long as it is on the front end, you can do whatever, right? Because 90% of what we do these days happens on the front end. Like, we don't do that much on the back end these days any longer. It's like maybe content types and stuff. Um, but even that, we can do that, right? With generic setup and, and profiles, right? So if a client comes to us and says, okay, we want on the existing infrastructure, we want something distinctive, we can give them customizations on the front end and on the back end based on their requirements. And we're completely free, right? Because when you create a new Volto project, you can make that dependent on another Volto project, which is the FCJ main project, and then just customize, right? And it will, will just work. So this, this is a great flexibility that we haven't had with, with previous uh, uh, Plown versions. Ah, crap, I can't st stop this anima animation, so <laughs> hope I don't have to dance or anything. Okay, next thing that I would like to show is member profiles. Um, yeah, most large organizations at some point want to, to display uh, member profiles in, in some way, right? For FZJ, they wanted to, to show their, their mostly the scientists, right? Um, because for them it's important to be visible, to have a profile where, where people can go and also a way of being contacted, right? Um, if you have been in the Plone community, think about uh, Membrane, um, where you have, uh, where Plone gives you um, uh, member objects as content objects. Uh, in 2010, I think, we impl implemented something similar for Der Freitag. I gave a, I gave a talk with, with Jill and Case um, about that in Arnheim, I think. Um, so we also have a history here in the, in the Plone community of, of, of knowing that problem and know, know how to solve that. Um, in Volto and, and also in Plone Backend, that was actually not that, that complex. We connected the existing Active Directory and LDAP of FTJ. Um, with with Plone and basically create a sync script that runs every like I don't know how how often how, how often it runs now, um, but it can run quite frequently because it's fast. Um, so you sync the member profiles with um, with uh, with content types and uh, FZJ had an Active Directory where they have this self service where people can actually update their 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 information and you want a single source of truth, right? So we rely on on the Active Directory. Um, and uh, and uh, this is where, where people can manage their their data, and this is how a profile looks like uh, on on the page. Uh, so you have a have a picture of that that person. Uh, you can assign this person to an institute or an institute area or one of the other bodies that that we have. Um, you can also mark them with different keywords. Uh, so the contact and the address that comes from the Active Directory, they can have an introduction. Uh, they have like uh, a list of the scientific publications that comes from another system. Um, they have uh, prices they, they receive, they have project, they have news. Most of the information we have in, in, in Plone, some of them like the, the scientific, um, the, the, the papers uh, where they are cited, um, uh, we have them in a, in, a, in a different system, so the key here is, of course, like always integrating, right? So Plone also integrates well with other systems like LDAP, Active Directory, or uh, or other services. So we have those like not 7,000 profiles because not everybody agreed to be online, right? Um, but we have lots of profiles and we have lots of of, of sites, as I as I showed you. Um, and now we can use that and create listings, right? So if you have an institute, you want to list your staff. Uh, you want to be able to just list them, right? So this is this is something that we added to the listing block. Listing block is also super powerful because you can add variants, right? If you come from Plone 5, think about like summary view and table view and stuff. And we have that in Volto as well with the uh, with the with the listing block, and you can add an arbitrary number of of listings, right? And this is this is the standard listing. You can choose. Um, you can see here the institutes or the institute areas they're in. You can choose if you want to see the picture or not, or the institute and not. So, so altogether, we have I think eight variations actually of just the, just listing members, right? Um, so you could do that. Um, we have a, 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 a second main theme, which is like adding that as a grid. But as said, you can have you have sub variants of that. I will I only show like the two two main variants, right? So you will, we, you will get the idea, but. As said, there are lots of use cases, right? Because it's it's a complex use case. It's a large organization, and, and people have different needs, right? <coughs> needs dependent on on what they want to show. 
Um, another like sub website that was really important was the the career website um, of SAJ. I will I will only um, cover that briefly, even though that that uh, that would be enough uh, enough content for 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 a separate talk. So this is the, the the current career website. It's it's integrated in the in the main portal. We could have done that also separately. I I, I showed you like multiple ways of of what we build for FZJ. Um, it has a highlight block at the beginning, and then I will only show a short excerpt here. Uh, you can basically yeah, search for a job, choose your career level, uh, your area of expertise, and where you want to work, and then you can hit the search, and then you get to the, to the job offers, right? Uh, there's much more uh, that we created for the career um, uh, department of FZJ, but here you have a sophisticated filter that, that works on Solar, so you can search there, and uh, for, for your right job and then, then choose it. Um, my colleague Jakob, like Jakob, where are you? There, he, he did all this work um, and I hope that at some point he will, he will give a talk about that um, as well, um, but I will just briefly cover that today. Um, another important, um, uh, important uh, success factor is that, um, is search, right? If you have a large organization with hundreds of websites and lots of content, um, you need a powerful search, right? And the clone search is is okay, um, but but we need something we need something really sophisticated. So we went with Solar. You can also use Elasticsearch. It doesn't matter that much. But we went to, for to with Solar for uh, powerful search features and high quality results. And in addition to that, we implemented faceting, as you can see here. Uh, so you can you can choose the facets, and it's really quick. I mean, this is what Solar gives you, right? That you don't have to recompute that over and over again. But that is really quick if you if you switch. Um, we have different kinds of like listing uh, elements. Uh, a like you see here, an image will be listed differently from from a page, or a document will be will be listed differently. You can sort uh, here. So this is one important thing. You can also even uh, look for job offers and and for people, right? Depending on on what you're, what you're looking for. Um, and the second important feature that I would like to highlight is that if you have hundreds of websites, you want your users to be able to search across all the websites and at the same time uh, search on one website only, right? And you could create an uber complex like search interface where you choose like the institutes and, and, and fix that with facets. Um, we work with our UX experts and we came up with a, with a simple solution that I think is more user friendly. You can see here below the, uh, the search uh, interface, so sorry for the German, I, I did screenshots for German, I don't know why, um, uh, in German. Um, you can see that you can choose in those radio uh, buttons uh, between like all websites and only this website, right? And we only show that when you're on a subsite because when you're, when you're searching on a portal, you don't care, right? You want to search everywhere, but if you're in the in one of the uh, the subsites, you you can choose if you like if you look for something and you don't find it, you can switch uh, to to the global search. Of course, we could we could build something sophisticated in here that if if you don't find results, that it switch automatically. But that's maybe a bit too mag too much magic uh, for people, so we didn't we didn't implement it. But but that would be possible. Um, so crap, running out of time. Ah, okay, another thing. Migration, of course. So far, I only talked about what we built, but we had an existing system, right? And we had lots of content in the old system. Um, and we needed to, uh, to migrate. So in the old system, and I think that was only the published content, was like 250 content objects that we had in government site builder that we received uh, in 90 gigabytes of XML data. Um, uh, we didn't, uh, yeah, we migrated at the end, 40K images, uh, 13,000 files, 7,000 news items, 7,000 events. Um, and the interesting part here is that, um, yeah, I will, I will spare you the details because that, that will be enough, like, uh, enough for, for an entire separate talk, I guess, so I will just <coughs> briefly go over it. Um, in previous project, we did full migrations uh, to Volto, and that, that kind of worked. Um, but this time we choose kind of a hybrid approach um, together with the client that worked pretty well, um, which was that we migrate the, the base content, so we migrate all the images, all the files, all the documents, all the news items, all the events, but not the overall like site structure. Because when you do that and you have an old system, which is usually where you migrate from, um, it's pretty limited of what you can do. And technically we can migrate 
all this content, but it will mean in the end that you will migrate only like text and you will have those big walls of text, right, even for overview pages, or you have a more sophisticated um, system that allows you to do things in the layout, but then it's really hard and labor intensive to, to, to write a migration there. And the bottom line is we did that in the past, so technically we can do it. It just turned out that, it, that, that the end result wasn't good enough to really like push the launch button. So what we saw in those projects where we did a full migration was that our clients had to had to do the sites, had the pages, had to do the pages again, especially the overview pages, right? And it's way quicker for an editor uh, to do that in Volto um, than like having the migrated like version over. So that didn't help much, right? So the, so the uh, so so the uh, so it wasn't like it wasn't well invested money, I would say, um, to do this full migration. So this is why we choose this hybrid approach. I'm not saying that this hybrid approach is always the right. It depends on the on your use case, right? But for this use case, I think it, it worked pretty pretty well. Um, and uh, yeah, to summarize things, uh, so within the 18 month of um, of of our project. Um, we built hundreds of websites, as I showed you, with different like for different levels. Uh, hundreds of editors were dur uh, were trained during a pandemic, and thanks to Volto and his user friendliness, uh, worked out. We got overwhelmingly positive feedback from our editors, um, and I think Volto was one of the key success factors of the um, of the project. The rich functionality that it offers, the superior usability. Um, and this results in low training costs and high acceptance factor on, on for the editors. And the new stack allowed us to, to develop in high speed, right? And develop like features um, that have been really labor intensive in the past um, to, to just implement that. For instance, like the subside thing, right? It's just it's just a, a, a marker interface at the end. And the rest, uh, like Volto does the rest, right? It's, it's, it's really not super sophisticated what, what, what happens there internally, but it's, but it's a feature that's incredibly valuable for the for the editors. And um, talking about success factors here, like Volto uh, wasn't the main success factor. One, one really highly crucial, crucial uh, success factor was that in a project that size, when you have that many stakeholders, right, like more than 100 like, like bodies, it's not easy to handle that from an organizational point of view. And I would like to highlight the people on SAJ side who, who did all the job there, right? We didn't do anything like that as, as Kit Concept. We, we could focus really on what we're good at, um, building the, the technical stack, right? And other people um, took care of, of this very crucial thing in the project. So Stefan Giesen and Philipp Pascha, who were product manager and product owner, they handled all these organizational challenges, right? Uh, and that's not easy to like have like hundreds of people waiting for you to like being able to, to edit stuff and, and to, to organize that, right? Um, and they did a pretty good job. Uh, and especially Mr. Patra, who I work with on a daily basis, um, did a fantastic job as a product owner. He made quick decisions. Um, I could explain like technical details um, to him. Um, and that worked really well. Um, Andreas Bruins from the IT staff, um, he created tons of clone videos. I told you earlier that we couldn't do in-house trainings, so what they did was they trained one person of the IT staff to do uh, screencast videos, right? Um, and he created like, I don't know how many, like maybe maybe 15 or so uh, videos. Um, they were really high quality. I, I have to admit I was impressed um, by, by the quality of that. And that helped FZJ to train really lots of people and then just throwing them at, at, at Plone, right? And they could work that out for themselves, right? No need to do uh, labor intensive and expensive like in-house trainings but they really did that with like only like a small uh, amount of, of labor at the end right um, and uh, the editor team gave us valuable feedback and insights uh, because there were people that worked with, uh, with with other CMSs for quite some time right and when people switch they and they have lots of experience they give you valu valuable insights right also for for Volto and Plone Core and we try to incorporate that and the feedback um, and then we have the IT staff, and uh, Bernd Volber and Christian Mons are, are here over there. Uh, and uh, if you want to know how to how to run like such a system, then uh, those are the people to talk to. Um, maybe at some point you you will give a talk. Uh, <laughs> if I continue, I mean, uh, uh, Erico just like said that you just need to get on the stage and, and express a wish, right? And then it will come true. So um, yeah, let's let's see. Uh, and one thing that I'm, I'm particularly proud of is that uh, uh, Bernd uh, Volber um, 
became a Plone core, core contributor, right? He, uh, we like showed him Plone and explained him about the community, and at some point, like he, he just contributed uh, a fix to 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 Plone Core. And I was like, wow, okay, that's that's amazing. Uh, we invited him then to the Beethoven Sprint. He came there. Uh, so I'm really, really happy about that because that's something that I always try in all my, in all our projects to show people how amazing the Plone community is and how to like to get them in, right? To to allow them to, to uh, yeah, yeah, see what an amazing group of people that is. And uh, yeah, this is this is uh, a great accomplishment. Um, we always try to open source as much as possible uh, in our project, uh, and FCJ supported us in that as well. Um, so. I think everything that I showed you, like from the blocks, is open source. So Volto Blocks Grid is open source anyways. We started that before the project, but FCJ allowed us to, to invest into that more. Uh, we have the slider block, which is open source, the carousel block, uh, which I showed you. In addition to that, we have a separator button and heading block. Um, we open source the text with background color uh, um, block that I showed you in the Institute website. Uh, and we have a GDPR banner um, add-on that we that we that we also open source, and we will continue to try to open source uh, portions of uh, of of what we did there, right? So if you saw something that that you like, just yeah, reach out to us, and and we can see what we what we can do to help you to uh, to accomplish something similar. Um, go to fset minus Jülich de. Um, the the site is live since quite a while. Um, check it out. Everything that I showed you, you can you can see that most of the screencasts were from the from the live side, actually not the editing part, but but the from the outside view, um, of course. So have a look. Um, check it out. Um, if you have questions, uh, reach out to me or to those folks over there. Um, something they can tell you better than I can. Um, yeah, my name is Timo Stallenberg on GitHub and Tisto, Twitter Timo Stallenberg. Uh, if you want to reach out, my email address is is there. I will leave it here. Um, feel free to talk to me, ask me questions, and um, thanks a lot. Any question? So the the subsite configuration uh, you showed, uh, and in the. That was in, uh, you configured the footer and you uploaded images. Did you store them as base64 in the registry or w where's the storage layer for that? Crap, I can't answer that um, because I'm just a manager these days, right? So I do Excel and stuff. Uh, so Victor has to answer that. I have no clue where, where we store them. And, and the logos, for example, that is con are controlled by a control panel are the same way that you use with uh, the logo overrides in Classic. Uh, we only had to uh, fix the um, the widget for because yeah, it wasn't compatible. We had to, I think, uh, we fixed something in Plone Schema also as well. Yeah. Now it works. Uh, yeah. say, yes, if that's the question, uh, yeah. Uh, so that opens the door to uh, also allow Volto uh, to have the um, customization of the logo the right way, uh, or at least the way that we do in Plon. So yeah, PRs are welcome. Timo, Timo, thanks. I'd like to respond to the thing you said about the, the training training in, in days of pandemic and COVID. I had the same similar uh, uh, situation and also experience. Uh, uh, you have to find somebody who's foolish or brave enough to create screencasts. And then if you have somebody inside the organization, great. Uh, one of my customers nudged me into it. Uh, and we had this combined training where I created five or six or seven short screencasts. And we did then actually, they, they use MS Teams, don't ask me why. But then, and then we had like, a, like okay, I sent like out three screencasts. Then we had an open session for uh, uh, for an hour where people could ask questions. I very quickly redid my own screencast by just following them again. And I did a second session, and that's how we trained the whole department in a week. And they have now reference material for the next two years for the site. It's there. It's some investment. It's some sweat for me, or if you find a lucky person inside your organization, that's so, so valuable. Screencasts, screencasts, screencasts.
also talking talking to people regularly and uh, and having open like business hours or something helped helped us a lot in in FZJ. I mean, all the credit goes to FZJ because they 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 organized that. But but that was something that r worked out really really well to just like let people like come and ask questions, right, and show them stuff. Um, and we only had a few sessions, and there were enough. And then at some point, people didn't show up any longer because they had everything they needed, right? Another technical one, sorry. Uh, the subsites. Um, so, so the site is multilingual, it's English and German. So that's uh, kudos to the team. That must have been a shitload of work to get that all uh, 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 translated. That is always the bottleneck. Uh, do you have subsites that are only in one language and don't have uh, language root folders? You have that. Okay, good. Good to know that that works in Volto as well. Yeah, that, I mean, there there is a use case where this is non-trivial. Actually, I mean, usually it. it, it, it in Volto, you, you have like a language, uh, a subsite, and in the subsite, you have language root folders. Mm, no, 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 no. That 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 wasn't our use case. So so we always have to language. We only have two language root folders, uh, because the institute and institute areas are uh, are sub URLs, right? They don't have their own URLs. Are they never do? No, they never do that. Uh, no, for the projects we did. So, so we have we actually I think we covered all use cases that are that are there. I, I can't think about any 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 else any other use case. So for the project website infrastructure, you can choose if you have a language root folder or not because there are blown instances, right? But we don't have the we don't have the use case that you have a have a subsite that's available under its own URL in addition to the to the existing one, right? I guess that's the only might be the only use case that we don't that we haven't covered, but. No more questions? You told about the uh, directory listing and all the data uh, coming from the active directory of uh, them. Um, how was it that, well, the structured data like phone number, room number and so on is quite perfect there, but all the additional stuff where the users actually want to edit the site, is that also done via uh, Active Directory or does Active Directory just create a base uh, site and then you can edit that? So um, we, have a, we have a member content object and we have certain fields that come from Active Directory that are read only for the editors and they can add more information like the picture for instance which is not an active directory or the links to the to the listings and those kind of things um, but we also have the use case that users are actually not in the active directory at all so you can also use the member freely if you want to have it somewhere else um, yeah so, so that's a quite flexible solution um, uh, and, and it, that was the easiest way to, to implement it for us actually Thanks a lot, Timo.